Hello, I'm Joe Clark. This is my personal A to Z of liners and cruise ships from the 1920s to the present day. It's in five parts. The ships are shown at sea approaching or leaving harbours, docked and anchored. Some are quite short clips because that's all I have and some go on for over a minute or more. Some of this film has been included before in my DVDs and videos, but a lot is new and has not been previously released, particularly a lot of the black and white post-war material, and the most recent up-to-date material taken on video camera whilst cruising. Quality varies from rather grainy, particularly the older film, which you see here, the very sharp images taken more recently. Each part is about 50 minutes or longer. I've tried to split them according to alphabetical order. The title for each ship shows its name at the time the film was taken, the tonnage and the original launch date and when the ship went out of service. We start now with Achille Loro. Laid down in 1938, Achille Loro was not launched until 1946 because of the war. She was originally built as William Royce. Achille Loro, as seen here in Southampton, was purchased by Floater Loro Lines in 1965 and converted to a cruise ship. In October 1985, four members of the PLO, a faction of the Palestinian Liberation Front, hijacked the ship. They murdered a wheel-bound American Jew, Dion Klinghofer, and threw his body overboard together with the wheelchair. The hijackers were allowed to fly to Tunisia by President Mubarak, who was unaware of the murder. With the hijack over, the ship went back to cruising as normal. The ship sank in December 1984 off the coast of Somalia, having burnt out. Much fuss was made of the two white sisters when they were renamed in 2003, Adonia and Oceana, identical twins. We'll see the first two white sisters, Strathaird and Strathnaver, later in the series. Adonia didn't stay long in the p fleet, reverting to Princess Cruises and her original name of Sea Princess in 2005. We first saw Aida Avita in Barcelona whilst waiting to join Minerva. Aida Avita is the sister to Aida Aura and forms part of Pierno's Princess Cruises, itself a part of the Carnival Corporation. The Aida ships offer a seagoing version of Germany's popular Robinson Clubs. And their guests are overwhelmingly German. We left Barcelona and Minerva and arrived in Valletta to find Aida Avita already there. And here we see her turning, waiting to depart later in the evening. Valletta is a truly beautiful harbour and Avita's passengers line the decks to watch them sail out. On another cruise, this time on Braemar, we sailed into Stockholm. In order to get into the harbour, 
you have to navigate around a number of islands and channels. Albatross followed us all the way in. She's a lovely old ship, built by John Brown and Company for Cunard as Sylvania. She has also had the names Fairwind, Sitmar Fairwind and Dawn Princess. The ship started cruising under the Phoenix Sorensen banner in 1993 and has proved popular with passengers on a low budget. It seemed to me, from the announcements made on the ship that we could hear quite clearly, that the passengers were predominantly German. This later albatross was built for long distance cruising, the Royal Viking Line, as Royal Viking Sea. It has since been called Royal Odyssey, Norwegian Star One, and Crown. At the time of filming, she was on long term charter to Germany's Phoenix Reisen. She was in Madeira Harbour when I took these pictures and we watched her sailing out that night. Most of the pictures I have of Akara were taken from on board, and I don't have that many of the ship itself. Akara was built as the Amazon in 1959 for the Royal Mail Lines and purchased by Shaw Saville in 1968. When you're a humble, able seaman, a lifeboat, I imagine, is one of the places that you can get a bit of sun. At this time, Shaw Saville was still taking passengers to and from Australia and New Zealand, generally via the Panama Canal. We see her briefly in Tahiti. These pictures show her unloading butter from New Zealand in one of the royal docks. It's lovely to see the old barges being loaded at the same time. Two black balls up the mast to note that something's afoot. Akaroa is in fact in dry dock and these are the last pictures we see of her. These are the only pictures I have of the America which were taken as she sailed down Southampton water to cross the Atlantic.
Launched in 1951 as the Kenya Castle for the Union Castle Lines, she was sold to Chandras in 1967. Americanus was a very popular cruise ship, particularly in the Mediterranean, and she lasted until 2001. We were due to visit Devil's Island on our way up from the Amazon River to Barbados. Unfortunately, the waters were too rough to put our boats down to go ashore. And the same was true of the Amsterdam, which cruised around us for most of the morning until we were both forced to sail for our next destinations. Amsterdam was built by Finn Cantieri of Italy for Holland America Line in 2000. This sailing boat got a good view of Amsterdam and the Bremer from where this film was taken. The Andes was a lovely ship, built in 1939 for Royal Mail Lines by Holland and Wolf. The first shots here show her in her later days as a cruise liner, just about to part on a round the world cruise. She passes Canberra on her way out. We see her next off Colombo on a world cruise. These pictures are rather sad. They're stills of Angelina Laura burning out in St. Lucia in 1994. She was originally the William Royce. The other ship in the last picture would appear to be the Spirit of London p cruise ship. Angola is seen here in the Tagus River, Lisbon. She was built by Hawthorne Leslie of Newcastle and scrapped in 1974. Miranda Seen here passing the Akaroa was originally the Royal Mail Aragon. She was sold to Shaw Savile and Albion in 1969. Like her sisters, she was used on the UK to New Zealand route and was later converted to be a car transporter. This time we watch very similar shots of the Rawa, the other sister. The Rawa was originally built as Arlanza, and we'll see Arlanza later on. Like her sisters, she became a car transporter when her days and use as a passenger liner were over.
we pick up the Arcadia, the ship built in 1953 as she passes Orcades in the North Pacific in the 1960s. The p and Company were not happy with delays at Vickers Armstrong when they built the Chusan and Himalaya and Arcadia was built by Brown on Clydebank. She can be distinguished from her sister Iberia by the top of her funnel and by the wraparound promenade that Iberia had on a deck. We pass her again. This time the light is not quite so good, but she was a magnificent ship and looked really lovely as she swept past. These pictures are the clearest and best that I have of Arcadia. Here we see her in Sydney Harbour. She went to the breakers in 1972. The second Arcadia was built in 1987 by Chantier de Lantique for Princess Cruises as Star Princess and transferred to P&O in 1997. She transferred back in 1997 and eventually became Ocean Village, another part of the P&O company in 2003. We'll see her as Ocean Village in a later episode. Our Lanza was built for the Royal Mail Lines by Holland and Wolfe and launched in 1960. We saw her earlier in her second life as Arawa of Shaw Savile. Here she's leaving the Tilbury landing stage on a voyage to South America. The baggage is hoisted aboard and there are still visitors accompanying those passengers who are about to sail. But it's soon sailing time and the visitors go ashore one by one and are waved off by those lucky enough to be travelling. The gun port doors are shut and the gangway lowered and soon we'll see the ropes being cast off and we can watch her sailing down the River Thames towards the estuary. Artemis was yet another Princess Cruises line that was transferred to p 
piano in 2005. She was originally built as a royal princess by Wartzilla in Finland in 1984. These pictures show her passing the Isle of Wight as the night beckons. They were taken in late September 2007. Artemis is the smallest of the P&O cruise liners now in operation and she doesn't have any children on board. She is thus very popular with the older generations. We see her now in Madeira Harbour about to sail. The ship in the background is the MSC Lyrica, which had earlier overstayed her welcome and was now anchored out whilst her passengers went to and fro in boats. We'll have a better look at the MSC Lyrica in another episode. Artemis also passes Ocean Village on her way out. We'll see Ocean Village later too. There's a lot to be said for the smaller ships. And whilst Artemis at 44,000 tons could hardly be called small, she is small enough to get into some of the harbours that the larger cruise liners can't enter. A cruise aboard Artemis is a wonderful way to travel. Unless, of course, it's ice skating, roller coasting, surfing in the ship's pool, or mountain climbing that takes your fancy. If that's the case, then you'll have to cruise on a larger American ship. Arundel Castle was built in 1915 and she originally had four funnels. At the time that this film was taken, she'd stripped down to two. She served in both world wars and was eventually scrapped in 1959. Here we see her in Southampton, preparing for another voyage to the Cape. Built by Armstrong Whitworth Newcastle for Cunard Line, Ascania served in the war as an armed merchant cruiser until 1943 and then as a troop ship, re-entering service in 1949. Astor was built by Halswerk Deutsche Werf in Hamburg. She's seen here cruising for trans ocean tours. She was sold in 1983 to the South African Marine Corps. Astoria was a sister ship to the Astor. She came from the same yard. We followed her through the channels and islands into Stockholm.
she berthed just ahead of us. We woke one morning in Auckland to find Asuka 2 had taken the berth previously occupied by QE2. Asuka 2 was once Crystal Harmony and switched to Azuka Cruises in 2006. She was built by Mitsubishi Heavy Industries. These pictures were taken as we waited for a ferry to take us across the harbour to Devonport. The Asuka ships carry mainly Japanese passengers. On an earlier cruise in 2007, we watched as Athena moved into her berth, Nassau. Athena was built in 1948 as the Italian ship Cariba and has had various names and been owned by several different companies since. At the time that we took this film, she was being operated by classic international cruises. She had come in early in the morning and later in the afternoon we watched as she sailed ahead of us for her next port of call. I must say that a short day in Nassau doesn't do the place any justice whatsoever. We were fortunate enough to have four or five days there before we joined Black Watch and another two on board. The 14,000 ton Atlantic was originally a cargo ship named Badger Mariner and was sold to American Banner Lines and renamed Atlantic. In 1959 she was sold again to the American Export Line and became Universe and was laid up in 1976. We get a quick glimpse of the Atlantica Originally the Colombi, seized by the U.S. in 1942, she then served as a hospital ship until the end of hostilities. Aurora built for p and by Mayer left in Germany is seen here in Vigo. She came into service two years after the Canberra was scrapped. There's plenty of room for healthy exercise on the boat deck. Regrettably I have no pictures of her at sea. You will recall that I said earlier that I had 
very few pictures of the America, and we just saw a short clip of her in Southampton Water. She became the Australis, and here we see the Australis sailing in rather murky conditions from a continental port. She'd been sold to Chandras in 1964. The America was a lovely looking ship and very few alterations were made to the outside appearance when she became Australis. I'm grateful to Fred Olsen Cruise Lines for these pictures of Balmoral. She's now 43,000 tons. She was originally the Crown Odyssey and then the Norwegian Crown. She was stretched by Fred Olsen when they took her over and can now take an additional 350 passengers. Boltonia was a jolly little ship of only 2,000 tons. She's seen here on a cruise through the Kiel Canal into the Baltic. She was built in 1925 and sunk in 1943 by a U-boat whilst carrying a cargo of oranges. Built in 1935, the battery was taken over as a UK troop ship and not handed back to Gdynia American Line until 1946. The company changed its name subsequently to Polish Ocean Lines. Bergensfjord has had a long career. She was built by Swan Hunter for Norwegian American Lines, later sold to CGT Dunkirk and renamed at De Grasse. Later again, she was renamed at Coral Riviera. Finally, Ross Sayang. One of the great joys of this hobby is finding a little bit of old film like this. Berengaria was originally Imperator for Hamburg America Line and was taken over as a war prize and handed to Britain and sold to Cunard in 1921. She was damaged by fire in 1938 and eventually scrapped in 1946. You can see an old three-masted ship in the background. This film, as far as I can make out, was taken in the late 1920s. Black Prince was the first Fred Olsen cruise liner that we ever sailed in. She's seen here in her early days as a cruise ship come ferry, leaving Southampton. She's a lovely little ship 
and will be very sad when she's taken out of service in 2010 because of the new regulations. These pictures were taken whilst we were on holiday in Madeira. She's coming into port and you'll see her soon berth alongside Sea Dream 2. It's like coming back home when you join a Fred Olsen ship for yet another cruise. These pictures were taken of her from Sea Dream 2 as she left Madeira the following day. Black Prince is seen here, tied up in Lanzarote. Parts of the old car deck have not been used for passenger accommodation and accommodate an indoor swimming pool and this marina, which can be opened up in good weather when the ship's in port for the benefit of the passengers on board. Black Prince was built by Lubecca Flenderbeck for Fred Alton. She also sailed as Venus, alternatively, until 1986 when she was reconstructed as a cruise ship.
lounging near the beach at Nassau, waiting to board Black Watch the following day, I suddenly saw this white spot on the horizon and was able to get some lovely shots of her coming into port. A few clips now from a promotional film kindly given to me by Fred Olson for use in this particular film. Here we see her in Nassau with the sun setting behind her. And a few months later, she's seen here in the Cook Islands. Not only was she anchored, but she had a tug at her stern, which you can't see here, keeping her away from the rocks by the shore. On this particular cruise, we left Black Watch in Sydney. She really is a most comfortable ship to cruise in, and very good looking too. Another of our favourite cruise ships, Braemar, seen here in Paratins in the Amazon River. She's a very popular Fred Olsen cruise liner and is currently being stretched to accommodate more cabins and facilities. Raymar is seen here, anchored off the San Blas Islands near Panama. A number of the catering crew have already gone ashore to prepare a wonderful barbecue for those passengers who want to change from dining on board. The big advantage that the smaller liners have on the huge cruise ships is that they can get into some of the smaller ports and anchorages. We leave Braemar in Williamstad, Curaçao. A very brief picture of the Brazil star of the Blue Star Line. Bremen was built by Penhote St. Nazaire as Pasteur. During the war, she was used as a British troop ship. She went back to her French owners 
after the war and was often seen in the Mediterranean. In 1957, she was sold to North German Lloyd and renamed Bremen. We see her here approaching the landing stage at Tilbury and then shortly afterwards leaving, sailing down the Thames. This sequence of film shows the 90,000 tons brilliance of the seas in Madeira. She towers above us as we stand on the dock waiting to board Sea Dream 2. Later that afternoon we watched as she sailed out of Madeira to continue her cruise. The type of ship which one cruises on is a matter of preferences. Personally, we prefer the smaller ships, but we met some people in Madeira, British people, who were on Brilliance of the Seas and were thoroughly enjoying their cruise. You couldn't exactly call Her Majesty's yacht Britannia a cruise ship, but cruise she did, and very often. At nearly 4,000 tonnes, she's also bigger than some of the other ships that we have shown in this series. Here she's seen inspecting a mixed fleet at the D-Day celebrations in 1994.
Britannia was taken out of service in December 1997 and can now be seen in Leith, Edinburgh. These pictures were taken on another occasion when Her Majesty visited Fiji. Britannia and her accompanying frigate will anchor in the bay. She anchors and the Queen comes ashore. Here we end part one of our A to Z.